Hello, welcome everybody, Mr. Navarrete, and today we'll be going over the Boyle's Law homework. So, let's get started. For our first problem, we have various parts, so let's just tackle it one by one. Herman has 30 liters of helium gas trapped in a cylinder by a piston. The pressure of the gas is 1.0 atmosphere. For part A, it asks, what will the pressure become if the volume is reduced to half of its original? So, just going to write down Boyle's Law. P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2. And then just plug in all of my values. P1 is going to be 1 atmosphere. V1 is going to be 30.0 liters. P2 is what I'm solving for. And V2 is 15.0 liters. So I'm just going to solve for P2. Isolating P2, I get 30.0 times 1.0 atmospheres divided by 15.0 liters. And you can definitely do this math in your head. I get 2.0 atmospheres for the pressure. For part B, similar setup, what will the pressure become if the volume is doubled? So again, just going to write down my equation, P1, V1 is equal to v, P2 times V2, and plug in what I was given. Now the only thing that is changing is my V2. Now it is doubled. Instead of 30 liters, it's 60 liters. Solving for P2, and plugging all of that into my calculator, I get 0 0.5 atmospheres. For part T, it asks, what will the pressure become if the volume is tripled? Well, I'm just going to write down my equation again and plug in what I was given. The only thing here that's changing is my V2. Now it's tripled. So solving for P2, 30.0 times 1.0 atmospheres divided by 90.0 liters, I end up getting 0 0.3 atmospheres. For part D, it asks, what will the pressure become if the volume is reduced to 10.0 liters? Again, I'm going to write down my equation and plug in what I was given. Now I was given P1, V1, and V2. So I'm just going to solve for P2. Isolating it, I get 30.0 liters times 1.0 atmospheres divided by 10.0 liters. Plugging all that into my calculator, I get, with six figs, 3.0 atmospheres. For part E, it asks, what will the volume be if the pressure is doubled? So now we're not solving for pressure, we're solving for volume. Same equation, P1, V1 is equal to P2 times V2. But now when I plug in my values, now I'm going to be solving for V2 instead. Isolating V2, I get 30.0 liters times 1.0 atmosphere divided by 2.0 atmospheres. Plugging all of that into my calculator, I get 15.0 liters. Next, we have, so the next part asks, what will the volume be if the pressure is tripled? So again, we are solving for our volume. Same equation, P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2. And I'm just going to plug in everything that we have. My pressure is tripled, so now instead of being one atmosphere, it's three atmospheres. And now I'm just going to solve for V2. V2 is going to equal 30.0 liters times 1.0 atmospheres divided by 3.0 atmospheres. And that's going to give me a volume of 10.0 liters. Next, what will the volume be if the pressure is reduced to half of its original value? So, same equation. P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2. And just plug in everything that we have. Our pressure is going to go from 1 atmosphere to 0.5 atmosphere. Solving for V2. And plugging all of that into my calculator, I end up getting... 60.0 liters. Last part of number one. What will the volume be if the pressure is increased to 5.0 atmospheres? So, same equation. P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2. And plugging in everything that we have. Now we are given our second pressure. So just plug that in. Same steps. We are going to solve for V2. Isolating V2 and plugging all of that into our calculator we get 6.0 liters. For number two, it says Melanie and Violetta performed an experiment where they took a gas trapped in a cylinder, adjusted the volume, and then measured the resulting pressure. Now you are given a set of data and told to graph it. I already graphed it for us. So now for part A, it says predict the pressure for a volume of 100 milliliters. 
So let's look at where 100 milliliters is on our graph and then see where it lands on our x-axis for our pressure. It looks like it's about two atmospheres. So we can predict that our pressure is gonna be about two atmospheres. For part B, and now we have to predict what the pressure would be for a volume of 250 milliliters. So looking at where 250 milliliters is, seeing where that lands me on my x-axis for pressure, and I'm gonna say that's about 0.85 atmospheres. Again, these are all predictions just based on our graph, so as long as you get something close, it's fair. For part C, it has predict the volume for a pressure of 4.0 atmospheres. So let's look at where 4.0 atmospheres is, and let's see where it lands us on our y-axis for volume. I'm gonna say that's about 50 milliliters. So again, as long as you're close, your graph might be different than mine. Next, it says predict the volume for a pressure of 0 0.90 atmospheres. So let's look at where 0 0.9 atmospheres is. It's about there. And let's see where it lands us on my y-axis for volume. So I'm gonna say that that's gonna be about 225 milliliters. Again, my graph might be different than yours. So as long as we're close. Next up, it says predict the volume for a pressure of 1.75 atmospheres. Looking at my chart to see where 1.75 atmospheres is, it's there. So that's gonna give me a volume of about 100 milliliters. Last one with our graph. It says predict the pressure for a volume of 800 milliliters. Well, my graph doesn't go all the way up to 800 milliliters, but I can kind of follow the curve. And if you remember in our math classes, we can say that we have an asymptote here at zero. So our curve is gonna continue, continue, continue going, but it's never gonna to touch it. And that can go back to our gas law equation. I would say my pressure at 800 milliliters would be about 0 0.25 milliliters. You can definitely go calculate it using one of the pressures that we have, or you can just make an educated prediction based on what we see on our graph. The rest of these are gonna be very calculation based. So for number three, it asks, what was the original volume of a gas that was collected at an atmospheric pressure of 0 0.75 atmospheres if it now occupies a volume of 22.4 liters at 1.0 atmospheres? So we're gonna write down my equation. P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2. And to find out what I have to solve, I'm just gonna plug everything that was given. Now that I have everything written down, I can see that I have to solve for my original volume. Isolating V1, I get V1 is equal to 1.0 atmospheres times 22.4 liters, all of that divided by 0 0.750 atmospheres. Plugging that into my calculator, I get 29.866 liters, but we can't forget sig figs. All of my values have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three sig figs. So my answer needs to have one, two, three sig figs. I look over, say if I have to round, I do since it's more than five. So then my actual answer is not 29.866, but 29.9. For number four, it says a gas is confined to a volume of 900 centimeters cubed at a pressure of 1.80 atmospheres. What would its pressure be if the volume is decreased to 300 centimeters cubed? Same equation, P1 times U is equal to P2 times V2. And again, I'm just gonna plug in to see what I have to solve for. Looking at my new equation, I know that I have to solve for P2. So I'm gonna isolate P2, and then I'm just gonna plug all of that into my calculator. With sig figs, I get a final value of 5.04 atmospheres. Don't forget to cancel out your units so that your ending units match up with what you are trying to solve for. For number five, it asks, what was the original pressure of a gas that was confined in a volume of 250 centimeters cubed it is now occupying 400 centimeters cubed at a pressure of 2.00 atmospheres. Same equation, P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2, and plugging in to know what you're gonna solve for. In this case, I know that I'm gonna be solving for P1, 
So I'm just going to isolate P1 and plug all of that into my calculator. And I end up getting, with sig figs, 3.20 atmospheres as my initial pressure. For number six, it says a gas is confined to a volume of 120 centimeters cubed at a pressure of 8.0 atmospheres. What would its volume be at standard pressure? So, same equation. And in this case, at standard pressure just means one atmosphere. So, knowing that, I can plug in. I know my initial pressure and initial volume. I want to find my volume at standard pressure, one atmosphere. So, I'm going to isolate V2. And plugging all of that into my calculator, I get, with sig figs, 960 centimeters cubed. For our next question, it says a gas has a pressure of 1.50 atmosphere. What happens to the pressure if its volume is doubled? So I'm going to use the same equation, P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2. We want to find P2, but we're not given a second volume. However, we know that the volume is doubled, so we can say that our V2 is going to be twice as much as our original volume, V1. Doing this, I can cancel out V1 and then just solve for P2. P2 would be 1.50 atmospheres divided by two, that gives me a final pressure of 0 0.750 atmosphere. Next up, the volume of a gas is 40.0 milliliters at 900 torr. What is the new volume if the pressure is changed to 400 torr? Same equation, P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2. And I'm just gonna plug in everything that was given. Looking at my new equation now, I know that I have to solve for V2. Isolating V2, I get 900 torr times 40.0 milliliters divided by 400 torr. And after plugging that into my calculator and getting sig figs, I get 90 milliliters. For nine, we have a sample of helium at 1500 kilopascals and 450 milliliters is compressed to 225 milliliters. What is the new pressure? I'm going to write down my equation again. P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2. And I'm going to plug in everything that was given to me already. Looking at this equation, I see that I need to solve for P2. Isolating P2, I get 1500 kilopascals times 450 milliliters divided by 225 milliliters. And plugging that into my calculator, I get a final pressure of 3,000 kilopascals. Last one, a balloon holds 975 milliliters of gas at 760 millimeters of mercury. It is then expanded to 2,000 milliliters. What is the new pressure? Same equation, hasn't changed. P1 times V1 is equal to P2 times V2. And I'm going to plug in everything that I was given. I need to solve for P2. So I'm going to isolate P2. So I'm going to get 760 millimeters of mercury times 975 milliliters, all of that divided by 2000 milliliters. Plugging all of that into my calculator with sig figs, I get a final pressure of 370 millimeters of mercury. And that's it. If you have any questions, don't forget to message myself or Mr. Morgan on Schoology. But other than that, stay safe and I'll see y'all next time.